In previous videos you could see us renovating our sketchy ruin. Now that we have a roof, it's dry inside. So we can start working there and get closer to having a nice refuge for the winter season. We will keep using natural and reuse materials as much as we can. It's always a challenge, but let's see how it goes. Welcome to a new project camp update. To make our little ruin into a really nice house, we're going to do some work on the interior. Let me show you how we are going to do this. Inside the big wooden construction that we already have placed, we are going to place a stick frame. We're going to place them a little bit under 50 centimeters, so we have to squeeze in the cork. This makes for a more better insulation. And then in this stick frame, we can place our windows and doors. After that, we can put the cork into our stick frame and then finally finish with uh, wooden boards. Okay, this is our plan. I'm gonna continue working on a 3D model for a bit and Frank is going to start to work inside. The first step is to paint the beams that will sit on the ground. Interior framing. After that, we put some insulation panels. Window frames are going to be mounted inside the wall frames and to have a nice finish for the interior of the window frame we are making kind of a box around it. It's a little bit of cutting, I believe. It's still a bit too long. Yeah, but we cut that out. Huh? We have decided to put the screws in from the inside of the window frame. They will be a bit more visible, but we can always take the windows out when that's needed. Okay, all the wall framing is in place now. It's ready to be corked with the insulation. And the windows are all also in place. This ruin is going to be a guest house soon. And also a house where the core team can be in winter. And uh, they want a little bit of luxury. So it's going to be a bathroom. Frank, how are we going to make a bathroom? Yeah, so we already laid out the bottom beams. We're going to have a toilet on that side, we're going to have a shower on that side, of course, a door in between. 
and our first step now will be to put up the wood frame. Now that all the wall framing is in place, but before we put in the cork, we're gonna put electric pipes in the walls. We're gonna have sockets in the corners of the rooms. We're gonna have some power in the kitchen, which is gonna be on that wall. And in the back wall of the ruin the house, there's going to be our fuse box and the place where all the piping comes in. here where I'm sitting and from here the water is running down towards the shower and we're going to mark now where the pipe is going to run and then we cut it out in the back and later the cork will be in front of the pipe. Yep. It's corking day, big step and I'm happy to get into it. We're gonna put the cork panels in between the frames. We made them uh, a little bit snug fit. So we're gonna have to tap it in, I guess. And then uh, we have a, gonna have a warm house after today. How you doing? All right. Have a go at this. Bloody fits, mate. A few little gaps left over because they have a bit of a weird measurement, and we wait for leftovers that fit here.
just put in the last bit. Yeah, just put in, finished her up. But you didn't film it. Didn't film it. But there's this, this bit up here, which is a little bit less satisfying. Bang on, mate. Bang on. Now that all the cork is finished inside, insulation is done. We the next step inside would be to um, mount the the boards that will cover the walls. Um, but they come from the sawmill and they didn't arrive yet. So in the meantime, we are going to continue finishing the outside. We still have to put granite around this door frame. So that's what we're going to do now. I think it should be a quick process, just take the grinder and make it down the back. It doesn't have to be deep, just to make a bit more okay. surface to attach. Cool, okay, then I'll start with that. I found the blade of the grinder is wearing out pretty fast cutting this granite. I'm gonna try uh, with this uh, cooling installation to uh, have a bit of a longer grind. With this we also have more of a mechanical connection that the cement goes into these grooves. Black down. How does this work? We uh, found out that the door is not exactly in the middle. So Tasman's making some more room. Yeah, that's it. Oh shit. Bang on mate. Yeah yeah, say it, say it. Bang on mate. No 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 no, just like yeah, what would what we're gonna do now? You know, that man is filling up uh, the space between the bricks and the granite. Putting down some uh, water and pure cement to make it stick better. <clears throat> oh, oh, oh. Because the granite is in place and solid. Solid as solid. that's missing this is not actually meant to be a like a walk-in door 
So there's no handle on the outside. There's only one on the inside. But yeah, we're gonna have to be a little bit creative, but I'm sure we will find a solution. We got this old oven that we were storing for a while already in the white tent. And since we want to install it this week, it's now time to take it down to the ruin and clean it up. Can we turn it 90? So this oven has clearly not been used in a long time. Lots of rust, lots of dirt. Uh, let's see if I can get it nice and shiny again. invest in uh, official stove bracket and uh, we also need half a meter half a meter extra of pipe to uh, get above the roof ridge yeah Nice boards. They're already quite finished. Tongue and groove all around. <coughs> nice pine wood. They said it was uh, Portuguese. Casa Madeira. The size of this stack of wood. It's a lot. All right. We're ready for the next step, Tasman. I'm ready. Frank is gone. Frank's gone. See you, Frank. Mm, but we will, we will manage this. And I never feel alone. We're going to screw these wooden boards onto our wall framing. Mm -hmm. Normally you would put a vapor barrier there. We think that we don't need it because of the rest of our wall construction. So we have the brick wall and then we have space between the brick and the wood. And in between the wood there's our insulation. And what would happen is that the moist from inside, from breathing and cooking, goes through the insulation and condensates on the brick wall. And the bricks we feel will suck up the water. And when it's a sunny day, they dry out from the outside. Um, we are going to leave the bathroom unfinished for this season, for this winter. So we can still see inside there. Uh, what happens on the bricks and the wood, how it behaves. And we're gonna go one half unoiled and one half oiled to see the difference in the weathering. Try this and see the outcome. Let's go. <coughs> so we're putting in the first board. Um, we're, we're having it off the ground because the ground is really not level. We're leveling out the first layer and then later we mount one that fits underneath.
Whoa, 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 wait! Normally, you would put these boards in place with a tagger, nailing them to the wall frame. But we are using screws, because we want to be able to reuse our materials. To make this easier, we have a nice screw system that Dave will explain you. Alright, so let's talk about our screw system. And the main reason for setting it up is that we just want to make sure we can reuse uh, our screws more and realistically. Because compared to a nail, uh, which is very hard to reuse, it bends if you take it out, probably rusty. A screw is pretty easy in reusing. You can drill it, take it out and reuse it again. And it's kind of a very unique property about screws. But realistically, in real life, this hardly happens. Um, because once you take something apart, you should then sort out the screws you have. And probably you have a lot of different options, different lengths, different sizes. So most of the time, all the screws end up in this bucket with a very mixed uh, sizes and then you don't really want to sort them out or you don't really want to use them and this actually is caused by a few problems which is uh, lying within the complexity of all the screws you use so on the one hand you have a lot of different screw heads so you have phillips, flat, uh, torque, hexagon, square so that's a lot of diversity in different screw types but then even within let's say torque you would have different sizes 15, 10, 20, 25 then you also have a lot of different uh, finishes, so you could have stainless, you could have normal steel, you could have coated, uh, zinc, galvanized, so many diversity in there as well. Then you also have different types of crews, so you could have full thread or half thread, um, which also requires another separation. And then you just have all the different lengths from 10, 16, 20, 25, 30, 30, 35. So it just adds up. So this just means you have a lot of variables and quite easily a very complex screw system. So here we have our current screw system. It's a lot of small little boxes that contain screws. The screws inside is a bit of a mix of different projects throughout the years. Screws bought in different stores. So we have a lot of Phillips, a lot of torque, many different lengths, many different thicknesses, different head sizes. So uh, since we're building here things and are gonna build a lot of things in a community setting, we really want to make sure the system is built and set up in a way that if a person comes, they take something apart, they can easily find which crew belongs in which box. Because the boxing system is cool, but we just have too much diversity. So we spend a lot of time trying to nail down the most essential uh, screws we need. So we started a research topic online where you can see and we ask you guys for some feedback. And now let me show you the result of that. Because the screws arrived. So here we have it, 100 kilogram of screws, but let me unbox them so then you can see what makes it so different. Alright, so here's our screw system. Uh, let me explain a few things what uh, makes this our system. One hand is we just reduced a lot of sizes. So these are all the sizes we have. So we have big steps in between. For instance, we go from 80 to 60 to 40. So we don't have the in-between sizes. So we just have to stick with these. Uh, then we've set on torque, only torque, and three different head sizes. This one is torque 10, 
Tor 20, the blue one, and the green one, Tor 30. Um, and then it's from two different brands. So this is the same brand, this is the same brand. And the reason for doing that is that, let's say you're done working and you have this screw, that uh, visually it's quite different than the ones next to it because it's a different brand. So you can quite easily recognize that it should be in this box because it's way too big for here and way too small for here. So it's another way to just make visual identification easy. Um, because yeah, as you can see, they look quite different from these ones. Then the two brands, they're just two brands that we found around here. I guess it doesn't really matter which brand. Uh, just make sure, yeah, pick one that uh, you still feel is around in a few years so you can reorder all your screws and we actually also have this ones which feels a bit outside of the screw system but somewhat in is the hex screws which we sometimes use for bigger constructions we also have a few different sizes there we we'll probably use them way less but they're also part of the screw system so now it's a matter of us to make sure we stick with all these sizes really incorporated in our drawings that we only go for these sizes uh, adjust our designs to it and then hopefully start using these as much as possible and when we're done with it uh, taking down the building so we can bring them back so now this goes there in the screw system and uh, we can start screwing side but they are not in the same angle so that means that they would meet somewhere here and there we put this solid wood strip which I'm now gonna work up onto with my boards in this corner there's gonna be the kitchen so we're gonna use the oil boards in there sharp around here. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise you get in trouble.
that's been some really hard work, but it starts to look like a proper house now. We have used 65 square meters of wooden boards and about 1500 screws, quite a lot. We are happy with the result. We've got some nice experimental stuff in there, like our wall system without the vapor barrier and oiling half of the wall boards. Besides that, it just looks really good. If you want to know more about the materials or the designs that we've used, you can visit our research module and join the discussion. In the next video, we are going to start wrapping up the camp for the winter season that will arrive soon. Different tasks around and some really good waterfall stuff. Thanks for watching and see you in the next update. Don't forget to subscribe, people. Whoa, 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 wait. If you really like our videos, please support us on Patreon. Yeah, you can even watch next week's video right now. And even without ads. <laughs> Yoohoo!